What is cranking wieners and welcome back to Camp Claw. I'm excited to film for you guys today. We're actually just about to go on a little road trip. The rig runner is fully packed. Take a look. We are going on quite the week long send. We've got fresh water, salt water rods, first aid kit, fresh water gear, some Guggen baits. And then we've got bibs, backpack, a lot of extra line, you know, just the ins and outs, the goods. But the reason why we're going on a big road trip is because we're actually picking up a specific item, which means that, uh, well, this is probably gonna be the last time you see the old white slow. I really hate to say this. I've learned to love this boat over the past year, and you guys probably know I've been a low guy. My first ever boat was a 16.5 low that I bought off Craigslist for like a few grand, and it still works. It's actually got a new owner, which is one of the guys that works for our company, and he loves it. He catches fish out of it all the time. Matter of fact, he caught a 10 pounder out of it, so that boat's got some good juju. Anyway, this is probably gonna be the last time, or one of the last times you see me in front of this boat or just kind of around this boat. Not gonna tell you what we're gonna do with this boat, but you may or may not have a chance to be a proud owner of the old famous white slow. We're actually going down to Portland to go pick up a new whip. Pretty stoked about this. It's been like months in the making and uh, I didn't think it was ever gonna happen, but it finally is happening. So that's why we've got the rig runner packed up and the low is not hooked up. This is so sad. I mean, I love this boat and you guys always love when I fish out of this thing. It is a bare bones, just straight up aluminum bass fishing rig, but it's going to go to a, a new owner, possibly one of you guys. So. Just keep on the lookout. Anyway, girl, we will see you later. Just stay put, don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Uh, we're gonna bring you a, a new friend, temporary friend uh, here in a few weeks. Just wait on Alex to get some camera gear all dialed in for this big send, and then we'll be on our way. The road trip starts now. Okay. It's perfect. Yeah. Nicely done. Feeling good. Bing. Sorry, almost left Ricky hanging there. Anyway, what are we gonna be gone for, like a week? Yeah, about a week. This is definitely one of the bigger sends. I want to do something like this for pretty much the whole summer, but we've just been having so much fun here, right on the property on Camp Claw that it's been, I don't know, tough to just take the time and do a, like a week long send. But we're actually gonna go south. We're gonna go to a different state, matter of fact. It's gonna be very exciting. Marine in South Portland and uh, on the back of the Forerunner, the Rig Runner. It's quite possibly one of the sickest little saltwater boats I've ever seen, let alone can call my own. Huge shout out to the folks over at Brunswick and Mercury and Boston Whaler for making this dream rig come true. I'm not a saltwater guy, so having a boat like this as my first saltwater rig is just, it's insane. I'm fully spoiled, so thankful, and so fortunate to be able to call this thing my own. Welcome back to Camp, actually this isn't Camp Claw, this is Cape Claw. a lot bigger than, yeah, Camp Claw, this is Cape Claw, I suppose. This is not my house, this is a rental. I wish this was my house, it'd be really nice. Anyway, we are in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, far from home in Maine, and uh, we're doing a little fishing uh, for Guggen Week up here, so we may film some stuff on our own, but for the most part, we're filming for the boys and with the boys, it's gonna be a good time, but I figured we'd get this video out of the way as it's something I've been anticipating for a long time. I have to give two huge shout outs, one of which to you guys for making this dude's dream come true. I feel like I literally have to be pinched constantly for the kind of stuff that happens, not only this channel, but in my life as an angler, as a videographer. Uh, this is a, a huge moment and a big milestone. Also gotta thank the folks over at Mercury Marine for making this happen. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the new Northern Rig 17.0 Montauk Boston Whaler. Take a look at this thing. Now, don't get it twisted. I know it seems like right now I've got three boats. The White Slow, the 198, unfortunately, is no longer with us. It, it didn't die, it's just not with me. We're actually probably gonna be doing a, a giveaway with that boat, so you might have a chance to win that. But that is on down the road. This is the new Northern Rig for saltwater and freshwater missions. We literally just picked this thing up today. I am a one day owner of a Boston Whaler. I've never even owned or driven a center console boat. Today I want to give you guys an inside look as to what it's like to own one of these boats and just kind of show you from bottom to top as to what you'd get if you were to get a, a little, what would you call this, like a, a skiff essentially. It's yeah. a saltwater skiff, saltwater rig. So yeah, let's start from the back, the bread and butter, and then work our way up. I'm pretty excited for this tour. Uh, let's just get into it, man. I'm so jittery. So on the back of this little 17-foot Montauk, we've got a 115 
Mercury, four stroke. This is a fatty motor for a little boat. If I had to guess maybe 30, 30 plus miles an hour, we will eventually break that in because your boy likes to go fast. Anyway, this is the beast behind the actual vessel. Um, <laughs> funny enough, uh, one of our managers, Matt, the other Matt, Matt B, was the one that helped spec this boat out. I just kind of told him I wanted a trolling motor, an outboard, and a steering wheel. Simple, plain, and easy. But uh, he went ahead and got this, um, what'd you call this, like a swimming platform? Like, yeah, I don't know, yeah, kind of a swimming platform that goes in the back. Chances of me using this, literally like 0.01%, but I, it, it I, looks cool. I might use it. Well, I mean, you might use it if you fall overboard and then we gotta haul your ass back in. But yeah, this is kind of like the plank, you know, walk the plank. Boston Whalers, they come with a plank, you know, like a pirate ship. Uh, but this one in particular is made out of teak. I'm probably gonna end up cutting squid on this thing and forgetting that that's actually teak. I don't know why they, they would spec out a boat with teak, especially a fishing boat, but it's bougie and it looks nice. And sure, yeah, it comes with a little ladder too. Check this out. So when I push Perrick in the water, he can uh, easily get back up. Wow, that's actually, I never even played with that. That's, that's really solid. And you got a little grab handle there. Hoist yourself up. Deadly. How sick is that? Sea Star steering on this engine. You got these little seats too. There was, there was like a seat backing right here. I'll, I'll get that real quick. So I think this boat can comfortably fit like maybe four people but it's rated for seven, which is absolutely ridiculous for a 17 foot boat. Anyway, here's one of the seat backings. So you put that in there and then your boy can sit right here and just chill in the back, step on a white claw while um, the captain's ripped to the next spot, which is really nice. Or use them as rod holders. The other cool thing too, is one of my goals for this boat is to be able to catch a tuna off of it. So we can use these little spots right here for, um, uh, what is it, 50 wides? I would say a 50 watt is what we would want. Yeah, 50 watt. We could get an 80 watt. It would be <laughs> very, very unideal to catch a tuna out of this boat, but I think that's exactly the appeal that I'm looking for. I think it'd just be so ludicrous to catch a, a tuna half the size of the rig that I'm using. Anyway, so rod holders, seat backings, Gucci, looking fresh. Uh, let's hop inside of the boat now. If you just want to chill in the back and watch your buddies fish, you can, you can go back here and, and hang loose. Or if you want to fight a tuna, you guys you get a nice little knee rest. Right? Actually, that's super ideal. <laughs> You having the 50 wide right here and just start cranking with your knee on this. Very, very awesome. You know what? I may take that back. This might be the perfect tuna boat. There's going to be some things I missed. Like I said, day one of ownership. I'm still learning all the quirks and features. Shout out to my bud, Doug DeMuro. It's going to take me a minute to figure out what everything's purpose is. Uh, we also have speakers on the back. It comes with JD, JL speakers. I'm going to say JBL. JL speakers and a fusion head unit. So there's four total speakers in this thing. So we can bump on our way to the spots. Moving on. Welcome to the captain's chair. This is... The coolest part about this boat, I grew up as a bass angler, so center consoles aren't really a, a thing. They're not really a genre of boat that you see too often fishing up north in Illinois, so I'm excited to drive a boat and stand up. This is really nice. This comes with, I believe this is a seven inch Ray, Ray Marine graph, which by the way is on. I don't know why it's on. Let's turn that off. <laughs> How to drain battery 101. It's got an area to put the chip in too right there. This does have a Navionics chip ready to go. Tachometer right here, fuel gauge, battery volt gauge, you got a horn, navigation lights, a bilge, auxiliary bilge, and then accessory button right there. Yeah, I mean, it's fairly easy. If a goofy bass angler like myself can figure out the layout, then it's pretty straightforward. I, I, don't, I like how it's not too elaborate. And then of course, you've got your steering wheel. The steering wheel cracks me up because it looks like it's off of like a I don't know, like a 1930s sailboat, right? It just literally, literally looks like it. It's super thin. Yeah, it's super thin and it's just all metal. Like it, it just feels so nautical. I feel like I'm like sailing the seven seas with this uh, steering wheel. But then over here, you've got this fancy throttle. I'm more of a foot pedal guy, but this this, this throttle is very seamless and uh, not too touchy. So I really like this. This is actually a Mercury th throttle too. Then moving on, you've got probably one of the more unique parts about this boat, that being the Ray Marine radio. So yeah, you've got a couple buttons on here. You got your power button, your channel button, volume. If you're in a life-threatening situation, you can flip up that button and press distress. Uh, if your boat's sinking or if you feel like you know you, you need help, you can press that button. Again, that's SOL button. Or you can use it for the uh, the other purpose, which I'll probably use it for. That being chirping other anglers out in the water. You see some guy struggling to catch stripers. You, you just get on the horn and be like, hey, Ricky, catching any? No, nothing? Oh shucks, boat's covered in slime. What are you what are you up to? Yeah, that's always fun. No, I probably won't do that. I'll get my ass kicked, especially on the Cape. A guy from Texas tripping them on their home turf. Definitely gonna get my shit rocked. Anyway, below the radio, you've got the fusion head unit. Uh, it's Bluetooth, it's got auxiliary, and it's got uh, USB. Super nice, like super, super nice. Way too nice for this Guggen right here. This is my life vest. Definitely gonna be wearing this. The ocean is, is big game stuff. And if I go overboard, I can just 
Beep. And get this, when you buy a Boston Whaler, you can get a your free your free little Boston Whaler cup that you can you can put coffee in there, you can put Tito's lemonade if you're not driving, and uh, yeah, it's it's nice. Free cup with a boat, what a deal. <laughs> On the other side of the center console, we've got uh, rod holders which fit four rods, four rods. Notice how I did that, four rods. Sorry, I'm a little buzzed on coffee at the moment. The vast majority of the fish that is gonna see this boat, it's gonna be stripy bass, maybe some bluefish. We are gonna go for some false albies too, which could be epic. So I'm usually running like seven sixes, seven foots, medium, medium heavies, 4,000 size, 5,000 size reels up here. And then there's also some spots to put your tools. If you don't have one of these and, and, and you saltwater fish and you need to get one, this will save your fingers and keep you from going to the hospital. And then in front of the center console, this boat comes with a igloo cooler. And because this boat is so agronomical, it also doubles as a seat. So someone can sit right here preferably Peric so I can see over his head and comfortably ride. And these are really good seats too, very cushiony, very nice. And then it's got a backing too, so in case it gets really rocky, you're not gonna break your spinal cord. No spinal tappage in this boat. The other great thing about this boat, so you don't jinx yourself constantly, is you can knock on literal wood anytime you say something stupid like, uh, oh wow, the weather's great, I hope it doesn't change. You can go over here, knock right on the gunnel and you're good to go. Again, teak, over the top, major boozy gonna cut tons of bait on this thing and forget that it's uh, fancy wood, but hey, that's just the Guggen I am. Anyway, let's talk about this compartment right here. Ooh. Yeah, so this center console's got a ton of space in there. I've got all three of my batteries, two of which that run my trolling motor, one of which is my starter battery that runs the graph and all the other accessories. Two bank charger, which I'll probably switch out for a three bank eventually. That just basically means I can only charge two of my batteries in the engine, kind of charges the, uh, the the auxiliary. I fit everything in here. All these, all the striper, all the saltwater gear that I need fits exactly in here. I'll just kind of briefly go over everything. We've got some epoxy spoons, some albacore spoons in here, sabiki rigs, jerk baits. That fits in nicely. 5,005 sizes, just to give you perspective. We've got first aid kit, swim baits, bigger paddle tails. I've got my Bass Mafia Guggen bag full of leader material and extra braided line in case I get spooled, which I'm sure will happen. Sick little Boston Whaler bag, which is meant for like drinks and, and as a cooler, but I am using it to store all my exo swims and my saucy swimmers. I love throwing paddle tails in the salt scene and yeah, I can just fit all my baits in there. Uh, we've also got some safety equipment in this bag. This has got like construction manuals, all that stuff, goggles in case the prop gets hung up in a lobster pot, I can dive down and cut that. I've got gloves in here, got an air horn. Beep, beep. And below the air horn, I've got my, my, my flare gun. I hope to never have to use this. We've got docks in here, we've got big spooks, big magic swimmers, talking spooks. Just kind of a hodgepodge, you know. Should we move to the front? Yeah, let's, let's, let's take it to the front now. So what we have here is something very, very foreign to me. I mean, as if the whole boat in itself is not foreign to me. Uh, this is a Troy motor I have never used before. Again, Matt B, shout out to Matt B for helping configure this boat. He said, you know what, dude, try something different. Step outside your comfort zone. So I said, okay. So now we are rocking with a Garmin Force. I've never used this Troy motor. I cannot give you a solid opinion on these yet, but I've heard good things and we are gonna try it out with this whaler. I believe it's a 65 inch shaft, which is probably the smallest you'd wanna go for a boat like this because it does sit a little bit high. And to go with the Garmin Force, we've got this 10 inch Garmin Graph that of course comes equipped with panoptics. You guys know how much I love panoptics. Not affiliated with Garmin at all, but I, I do have to give a little bit of credit where credit's due. This thing is, is deadly. So that way if we're following bait, mackerel, menhaden, squid, we can kind of track where that bait is if it's not showing itself on the surface. This is this whole duo right here, very different for a Boston whaler. Most of the whalers that I've seen don't even come with a front graph. Foot pedal is also really unique with this uh, trolling motor. I've got it stored under here so it doesn't rock around. The cool thing I learned yesterday is it's actually detachable. There's a spot right here where you can detach it and you can essentially control the front trolling motor anywhere in the boat. I could literally control it on the dock if I wanted to. It can run on AA batteries, I think two or three. So that's pretty nice too. It gets a little bit rocky up here and I, I do wanna find a solution where this can be recessed. That might be kind of a, a tough build, but we'll get there when we get there. The thing about this boat that I like so much is it's different. I feel like I can learn a new layout of a rig that I've never really experienced before. And I'm excited. I can't stress this enough. I'm so thankful every day to be able to give them the opportunity to not only fish out of a boat like this, but then own it and bring you guys along with the journey. It's gonna be an awesome little tool for future videos to come. Uh, we're gonna do some crazy stuff.
believe me, this boat's gonna open up some serious doorways for content. I was almost certain that we talked about everything, but there's actually two things that I missed. Let's take it back a little bit. Two booty cheeks right here, but also underneath, you have your live bait well. Which Whoa, is, which man. Which is pretty deadly, yeah. Um, your boy's not really a big live bait fisherman, so what we'll probably do is put drinks in here. Uh, plenty of them at that. It'll act as a cooler, but also as a place where you can put live squid. We'll probably need to use this if we do go tuna fishing at some point in time. And it's a pretty big one, too. That's, it's pretty spacious. You can fit a good amount of bait in there. The two boxes I have in my lap right now are actually some of the most important ones. This is all my terminal. Terminal is so key. When you're saltwater fishing, like I always upgrade my hooks no matter what lure I'm buying. Upgrade the split rings. I've got snap swivels here. Or got weights here for sabiki rigs. Some bigger hooks for bigger baits. A couple lighters in here too so we can burn mono and fluoro. Just that way knots don't slip. And then also I've got most of my jig heads under here too. So when I'm throwing paddle tails and saucy swimmers and exo swims, we've got all the jig heads necessary. Half ounce, three quarters, quarter, full ounce, ounce and a half, two ounce. I got some bucktail jigs over here too, which is kind of old fashioned, but these are tried and true. The way you charge this boat too, is just right above those tackle trays. There's a plug right there, which is just super seamless and easy. When you're done, you just go boop, and she's closed. Wow, I think we've covered mostly everything. Um, there's not a ton of compartments in this boat, but what compartments there are, you can fit just about everything you need. If you're striper fishing, you don't need that much stuff. Just your terminal, your plugs, a few rods, extra line, and some split ring pliers, and you are good to go. The last thing I want to mention about Boston Whalers is that they are, for the most part, pretty much customizable. Most of the Boston Whalers you'll see have like these elevated side rails, guard rails at the, at the bow of the boat, which I definitely did not want because I want everything to be flush when we're fishing. I don't want necessarily like a bunch of metal um, from the gunnel up. You can opt out of that. You can opt out of that. You can not get the teak. You can get the teak. You can get the core. You don't have to get the core. These boats, I think, start off at high 20s and they can go all the way up to, I, I believe, almost like $40,000. Uh, this one, for the most part, is like rigged to the to the top tier which is just incredible to even say but yeah there's a lot of different models of montauks that come smaller than this they come much bigger than this i like the 17 because it's perfect for not only fresh and salt but it's just perfect for like what i do i don't have a bunch of people in my boat at one point in time and it fits alex me and lucky seamlessly honestly the perfect you know fresh and salt water boat that i can think of and i'm excited to use this thing in, in future videos it's just it's just amazing it's like an ultimate fishing rig and also too people use these for leisurely activities as well that's why you've got like this the swimming platform and you've got like the cooler and stuff like that it's a comfortable boat but it's also a very fishy boat so there you have it there is the full-on tour of my new 17 montauk boston whaler although the boat looks gorgeous right now it looks a lot better in the salt water so what we're going to do is wait for the storm to pass and splash it out on one of these little bays or ponds or just the main ocean or something like that so we're going to take you guys along with show you guys the boat in action we'll meet you guys out in the salt <laughs> This is what I love. Saltwater fishing. As soon as we launch the boat, there's birds following bait. There's oh yeah, we got. Oh, those are striker. We're on, we're on, we're on, baby. Let's go. We're on. Let's go. Baby. Yes, dude. That's a decent one too. How sick is that? Ah, I knew we'd get him, man. Alright, I'm on spot one. Yes! Oh, yes! Let's go! First ever, first ever striper in the brand new whaler. Phone this thing for like a little bit less than 24 hours. We've already got slime on the deck. Woo! Yo, baby, that's so sick. Decent striper, too. Quality fish. We're literally just fishing a pond right now. A pond as in like just a saltwater pond. Only because the weather is so nasty. And that is my first ever fish in the Boston Whaler. Dude, like not a bad one. No. Like not too shabby. You're fishing three feet of water. They all of a sudden just started erupting. Threw in a little twitch bait and he crushed it. Let's go put it there, man. How epic is that? <laughs> I love these stripy boys. See, that right there is why we got this boat. I love striper. She's nasty out here, but we're making it work. Let's go.
There we go. Little one. Might be a fluke. It's biting really weird. Might be a fluke. My second fish out of the Montauk. Just a behemoth. Just a Cape Cod Canal behemoth. You're so mad. Sorry if the lens is a little watery. It's raining out here. In case you didn't get that hint. Okay, bye. Kiss the camera. Mwah! See ya. Come on. Buddy's on. There we go. Oh, nice. That was cool. I knew I'd have to get on the top one a little bit. That was sweet. Not a giant, but feels good. Oh, first top water fish of the day. Not too shabby. Right on the point of this grass. It's so cool how these stripers will sometimes relate to grass just like largies or something like that. Oh, how green. They're so green. Like literally green, the color green. Wow, look at that. That's wicked. I've never even seen that. Hey, sister, we're in this together. No, I'm not a the one with the hook in my hand. Nice little striper boy. Stripey guy on the top water. Boop. Thank you. See ya. You. Oh. I was not even looking. There we go. That's a decent one. Dude, that's a decent one. That is like not a bad fish at all on a little skitter walk. <laughs> We're fishing a three foot little marsh flat with a bass lure. And this is not a bad striper. Oh, he's not huge. He's just hooked funny. Still, it's just so cool, man. It's all about the hype. It's the experience. Sometimes size just doesn't matter. Woo! In the boat. Buddy, you got fooled. You got played. You played yourself. Actually, I played you. You thought you were getting a little, little piece of bait. Meanwhile, you got troubles to the dome ski. Nice fish. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I feel like that's what every angler say on YouTube. Oh, look at the colors. It's such a gorgeous fish. I gotta stop saying that. They're all pretty. No fish is not pretty. We did it. One day ownership. We've already caught fish on it. Oh yeah, smells like slime. And even Alex got a little blood on the on the teak. That is how you break in a Boston Whaler. Wasn't the most fabulous day of striper fishing, but it's just nice to get the boat in Portland, Maine, and then drive it down here, and then get after and do some fish. And we're gonna try to do our best to film as much as we can while we're down here for Guggen Week. But at the very least, we got one video out for you guys. Introduce you to the new white rig. Sadly, I have to say goodbye to the, the white slow, but uh, it's been a good run for this boat. Now on to a new chapter. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Thank you to everyone who made this deal right here possible. I don't take this for granted one single bit. I also have to thank the folks over at Boston Whaler and Mercury Marine for making this dude's dream come true. It's seriously a pleasure and I can't, uh, I just can't get over it. It's insane to be able to own one of these center console boats. But anyway, I'll leave their link down below if you guys are interested in checking out any of their 17 uh, Montauk models or any of their just like Boston Wheeler models in general, along with Mercury. But we are peace not signing out. Thank you guys so much for watching this little cape episode. I appreciate the view. And as always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop.